and another gorgeous sunny day we have here. <laughs> I will keep mentioning because I just cannot take it for granted. I just love the summer and I'm grateful. <laughs> anyway, I'm doing a mud today, a joypad uh, jump button mud, and since it's joystick season on my channel somehow. <laughs> I went out in the garden to get some mint and Arabian jasmine and there's lots blossoming out there. I even decided to go for a nice walk. So today's mod has actually been requested by a friend and patron of mine, Hazemaker. However, I do have a future project coming up, which I was planning to create this anyway. So it actually works out both ways, so it's nice to like break it down and show you how it works. Now this pad itself is a really cheap and nasty pad, <laughs> which you get on eBay. And it literally just like, you know, $1.99 or $2.99 or something. And I do not recommend them. But I actually got this just to kind of examine it because uh, for a future project. And uh, I just decided, okay, I don't need it after all. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is for this project, use it as demonstration. Just kind of like, you know, demonstrate how you would do the... Um, the jump mod. Jump mod basically is um, instead of if you're going to use a Mega Drive pad or a joystick or anything on the Amiga, a lot of people, including Hazemaker, <laughs> my patron, want to use uh, the jump button, one of the one of the buttons, sorry, as a jump instead of up. Especially when you're using a pad. I know that using a Mega Drive pad in the Amiga is quite difficult, actually. So you know, because you have to keep joystick, it's fine, but you have to keep doing that with the pad. So yeah, it gets a bit, it's easier just doing that. So what I'm gonna do today is just uh, create a circuit that switches between the up and one of these buttons. Are these screws even real? <laughs> it's like, okay, they are. Okay, so we have here the IC and the six button pad and you know, these, um, these are touch sensors. So let's test this with my trusty joystick tester and see what happens. <laughs> if it works even to begin with. So notice these touch pads, they actually even react to the touch of your hand. And then that's of course start, there's no thingy of that. That's A, B, B is uh, Amiga Fire, and C is Amiga Button B. So what we need to do is swap uh, the up, which on many Amiga games is jump, with A, so we have A as the jump, so we can like swap them and then have a circuit that you know when you flick the switch it stops but it toggles between it toggles the polarity so we need to do some exploring in this so meter goes on continuity I guess so of course ground and ground are common you know they connect to each other so what we need to concentrate on is the other buttons okay so before we begin cutting and soldering and all that stuff <laughs> i'm going to get into uh, showing you how to do a polarity switcher uh, it's very simple now you have two types of switches well you got many types of switches but i have two types here now this switch which i have here is a single pole single pole meaning it's got one set of three um, contacts so it has you know one switch inside you know clicking between this, these two, and these two. And it's a double throw. Double throw as in one, two. So that is single, pull, double, throw. Now this switch here is actually a double pull switch. So you have uh, two, of, two sets of three contacts. Now that means, imagine this as two switches in one. They're separate from each other. And uh, if you flick the switch, it connects these two together, and it connects these two together, but not across each other, if you know what I mean. So it's like two separate sets of switches. You can get a double pole, you can get triple pole, even quadruple pole, but the others get expensive. You know, so you can switch many things at the same time with just one flick of the switch. And single throw, because there's no, you know, it's not double throw, It's there's no middle or on, on, as some of them um, describe it. This one would be an on, off, on. Sounds like someone's calling me outside. Muddy. <laughs> I don't know any kid. So yeah, this is a double pull. Two pulls there, two rows. Single throw. So now you know what the what this means whenever you're looking around for switches. <laughs> you know, because it's it can be a little... You're wondering what the frick is a dubset or a subdit. 
<laughs> That's what I used to think ages ago, you know, years ago. So how to connect the switch to uh, toggle between a different polarity. So let's say we're making a positive negative polarity switcher, yeah? You know, when you click the switch, it swaps the polarity, reverses the polarity, I should say. So you connect the center ones with the source, the input, going into, going into the center ones. And what you do here is you attach this one to this and this one to that. So this is your output here. Now when you flick this switch to this side and these two connect, and both these two will connect together, you will get plus going in here, going into here, coming out of here, and that is your plus, yeah? And the negative, of course, is here. When you flick the switch to that way, to this side. <laughs> Freaking rabbit ears. <laughs> so when you click it onto this side, these will connect here, yeah? So what'll happen is your plus will go straight here, straight through this, and you'll have this as a plus. And of course the minus will have this. So it depending on when you where you flick your switch, this is gonna be, you know. <laughs> Depend this is gonna be plus or minus or swapped around. So that's it. That's basically it's simple polarity switcher. Well, I don't know why I'm finding that amusing. I just uh... <laughs> So let's turn the soldering iron on. So these are just gonna be the crossing wires. I'm just gonna tin them. The wires I'm gonna use to cross on the switch. Actually, on one end of each, just doing these extra wires also. On one end of each, I'm going to join another wire because we're going to need two wires stuck on this on the switch. Same with the other one. Now let's get the uh, switch and tin that. That's on the other end. Now as with the diagram, you get the one on this side and you cross it over with that. So it's just... Yeah. And the same with this one. In the input, the, what you want to change the polarity of, or toggle the polarity of, that you, s you connect it to the center. And that's the other one. Done! So we have a switch done. It's actually that simple. Uh, what I'm gonna do is demonstrate this uh, polarity changer with a motor and uh, I'm just gonna like, you know, do a really stupid example here, just like one blob. Of <laughs> just to keep it in place. Let's just see, let's just have some fun here. I don't think it's gonna even support. I guess I've got this goofy setup going on here. <laughs> just to kind of like, you know, show you and uh, no this is not sponsored by magnum i just happen to like magnums the original magnum and the almond one are my favorite ones i don't like white chocolate it just feels fake <laughs> it's too sweet for me anyway even though i like the initial bite okay so what we need the source of this switch to be is the positive and negative so you connect the motor to the output uh, the part which uh, switches the the polarity is switching output of the switch and then the input of the switch is of course positive and negative so let's connect those actually it's just I'm not doing fucking around finding more wires we don't even need the breadboard here <laughs> let's just <laughs> connect this Woo! <laughs> that scared me <laughs> it's kind of it's big and it's spinning really fast okay Down to five volts, it's on twelve volts. <laughs> that looks so cool. It sounds like a helicopter. Take the voltage up. That's scary. Polarity. The other way. I'm scared of this <laughs> because it can a bit can fly off. I mean, it's only hot glue. 
Now let's put it into a Mega Drive pad. That's so cool, I'm happy with that. <laughs> if you connect the motor to a transducer speaker, you can kind of hear it. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. <laughs> I go off on a tangent. This is, I used to, when I was little, I used to like messing around with electronics just like this. Uh, just like doing stupid things with, <laughs> with these things, and that's how I kind of learned slowly. Okay, so with regards to the Mega Drive pad or joystick, uh, how this is gonna work. Hold on, uh, let's, I'll show you exactly how we have to connect it. Okay, so crude drawing over here, but uh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> as long as you know what's going on. This is the up button. And this is button A. Now, what you want to do, what we want to do is switch between them, right? Now, this is going straight to the Mega Drive. So, or whatever computer, if you're going to connect it to your Amiga or whatever. So that goes to the connector, the plug itself. And this uh, is ground, which is common. That's the first thing we tested. So what we need to do, we need to actually cut these, each of these. So they're just kind of like, you know, complete gap there. And uh, let's draw that switch. The switch here. It's the wrong I can use. So we do the cross wire thing there and the switch. And we connect this top bit. This bit from the plug, from the, um, yeah, the pad itself, going into this top bit here. Yeah. And the bottom part from the buttons themselves. They're the ones, they're the ones you want to switch around. So you're connecting them to, you know, the center. So when you flick the switch on one end, you're, you know, you're joining the bottom two. You flick the switch down, you're joining the bottom two. So what'll happen is this button will connect down to here, then connect to the blue part. So that will be the up. This will end up being the up here, yeah? And this button will go down here, connect down here, and go into the um, uh, button A. So, that will, so this will be the button A. So when you flick the switch up, like this, what'll happen is it'll just be normal. The up will go straight to the up. The blue will go straight to blue. Green will go straight to green. And it's fine. That's polarity switch. So you can switch between the buttons now. So let's do that, and uh, I'm not gonna do like a final product or anything. I'm just gonna do it to like, you know, illustrate it uh, that it's working in practical sense. This is getting painful. I need to take coding. <laughs> okay, so the first one we wanna cut is the up, the connection to up to the uh, one of these. Actually, the, in this one, they're going to the chip straight away. So we just cut the track here, just a few ones over with the, with the um, craft knife. Scrape it a bit and just test it. Yeah. No. See, right, it's cut now. Let's cut the track. Cool. That's good. That's what we want. Uh, let's do the same with this. This is a much smaller track here, so it's going to be a little bit trickier. But this is the one we're trying to cut. Craft knife. Moon knife is too clumsy for this, so we do craft knife. Crafty. <laughs> Now let's test again the continuity. Um, this should, yeah, it's fine. Now this here. Now this shouldn't, right? Okay, that's brilliant. Now then, this part, not the part close to the pad, this, this part here connecting straight to that chip and this part here, which is connecting straight to that chip, those two are those two, think of them, are going to the the wire here, the actual computer itself. Those, that's where they connect to, right? So you want to connect the edge of the switch, the edge of the switch here, these two ends. You want to connect that to those two. Now these are very thick wires. <laughs> if you're gonna actually do this, I highly recommend you getting mudding wire because it's it's way thinner. DD wire. <laughs> yes, we turn them. Okay, so we have four wires that are prepared. Uh, what we need to do first is the board itself after... Scrape that top bit off there. And then on this part, we need to scrape these two parts here. 
this part before the cut that connects to the button and after the cut that goes to the chip. Just a little flux here to make it easier. Just paint it with some flux here, here, because we need to thin them. Fantastic, the solder is attracted to it. Once the solder is attracted to it, you can then solder any wire to it then. So it's just like preparing the, um, yeah, I'll just do this one. Let's solder the part that goes to the, the top, the chip, here. Okay, that, that one's solder on. Now we just do the bottom part, the part that connects to the bottom. But, bottom? <laughs> the part that connects to the button. Here we go. It's two of those connected. That's the button. And this is the chip. And this modding wire is fairly low profile, you know, it doesn't disturb it too much because it's so thin and small. And yeah, it's just, it's best just getting some of this stuff anyway. So as in the diagram, the center part, this the part which is, you want to change the polarity of that, yeah? So that's this that goes to the button, this blue one here goes to that, and this that goes to that button, yeah? So let's uh, connect those two. So now that is connected. So you just now can need to connect these edge connectors, these edge contacts with the, the other end of the... Uh... So now that is done, let's test it. Do remember earlier on when we were testing it, there is no indicator for button A. So if nothing happens, if it doesn't, you know, light up anything, consider button A. <laughs> consider that button A. So now you have the up, down, left, right, yeah? And then you have the you know the B of course, but then that's A. Alright. Now let's turn let's uh flick the polarity. Now you have up, which is not working. Down, left, right. Up is actually A, by the way. So up, down, left, right, and then jump. We have uh, A is jump. So it works. It's a success. <laughs> so that's yeah. Okay, so we're done with that now. I'll continue to drink my flowers. <laughs> so, uh, I really hope this helps. It's actually very simple. It really is actually quite simple. Just uh, get yourself some modding wire and get yourself uh, at the smallest double pulse switch you can find. You know, quite a low profile switch. The smaller, the better, really. So you can like, you know, mount it on your um, pad case or your joystick case or something like this. So, yeah. Anyway. That's all for today. <laughs> Thanks so much for your likes. Thanks so much for your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos. There's like a huge joystick series happening. So yeah, do stick around and subscribe and press that bell icon because YouTube is goofed up. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. And uh, for now, I will say adios. For the generous donations, I would like to say a big thank you to my patrons. Al Hunt, Alex, Andrea, Anthony Proctor, Boris Matashin, Brad Hansen, Cameron Armstrong, Kari S. Turner, Carson Nervad, Carol Commodore, Virtual Count Virtual Counting Virtual Sheet, <laughs> Electronscape UK, Eric Andre, Espen Gulbeck, Fred M, Gav Missingham, Jeff Major, <laughs> Hayes Maker, James Burr, James Harry, Jan Beta, Jason Cadaver. Jim Leonard, Just80, Mark Moran, Mark McDonald, Matthew, Matt Shepkar, Matt, Matthew Sips, Mickey Holm, Opraxis, Patrick Ekman, Paul Delta, Peter Lingbag, Rancy, Restless.com, Risky Flyer, Robert Menis, Rofi Otterstein, Roy Gelotti, Rudiger Stiedl, Sophie Leroy, Steve Jones, Stuart Evans, The Deeply Cynical, Thomas Prisina, Thomas Muller, Tina Stormcaller, and Wayne Marsh. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below as well as links to my patrons' websites or YouTube channels.